What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. First, we'll hear about the crazy adventures of a taxi riding dog. But he doesn't know that I put on a show for the passengers in the back seat. Then, Felton Perry reads the story of Harvey, a kid who just doesn't like to clean up his room. Today, young man, his mother said, is the day you clean your room. Also, Catherine Thomerson will read a book about a baby blue cat in a bad mood. The baby blue cat said, no. And the story of a little girl who thinks there's a whale in her backyard. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. wonderful things to do here, Kino. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Super extra fantastico! This is Club Eco, Kino. Here you can make beautiful things from stuff that you would throw out at home. Gee, well, what do I need? Scissors, sticky tape, and some trash. You mean, you mean like garbage? <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> uh, Club Eco is all about finding new uses for stuff that you usually throw away. It's a form of recycling. Oh, oh, we've been studying recycling in school. You know, like cans and plastics and old newspapers, stuff like that. Well, that's what we'll use for our project. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? Uh, we have some cardboard oh, yeah, and cardboard some... cardboard and little pieces of plastic, all kinds oh, of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, what would you like to do with this? Throw it away. <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean... What would you like to build with it? Oh, gosh, uh, let me see. Um, uh, how about a little truck? All right. Okay. Um, let's see, what do we start with oh, first? Oh, let's see. Uh, oh, how about those little pieces of wood there? They could be the wheels. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, there's, there's a piece of cardboard that could be the side. How about that? Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Boy, check it out, Lucy. We made a really cool truck. We sure <laughs> did, Kino. And you know what's important is that you found a way to take trash and create something interesting out of it. <laughs> yeah, this was really fun. Well, what else can we build? Um, let's see, well, we've got a whole bunch of feathers. What do you think we could do with that? Mm, let's see, uh, build a chicken? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, how about a headdress? Oh, yeah, we can make a beautiful a headdress with the feathers. Chicken. <laughs> this is the city street room. Here, you can pretend to be a motorcycle policeman or a bus driver. Oh, that's really very, very interesting. But hey, Lucy, you know what? What? Well, Mara told me that Felton was coming to story time today to read a book about a boy called Harvey. Really? Yep, she told me that Harvey had trouble cleaning up his room. Oh, that sounds like a good book. Oh, well, I have a book here, and if you'd like to hear it... Oh, yes, let's, let's! <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is The Adventures of Taxi Dog by Deborah and Sal Baraka and illustrated by Mark Buner. My name is Maxie. I ride in a taxi around New York City all day. I sit next to Jim. I belong to him, but it wasn't always this way. I grew up in the city, all dirty and gritty looking for food after dark. I roamed all around, avoiding the pound, and lived on my own in the park. One day, a car stopped 
Its tire had popped. Out stepped a tall man I could see. He came over and said, as he patted my head, Are you lost? You can come home with me. Did I hear right? Oh, boy, my tail wagged with joy. I jumped right up on the seat. He said, my name's Jim. I could ride home with him, and he'd give me some good food to eat. <laughs> I ate and I ate. I cleaned the whole plate. Then Jim took a scarf of bright red. He tied it around me, so glad that he found me and kissed me on top of my head. <laughs> my wish had come true. I would start life anew. At last, I had a warm home with someone to love me and take good care of me. No longer would I have to roam. Jim said, your name's Maxie. You'll ride in my taxi. We'll ride all over the town. We'll see all the sights, all the streets and the lights. We'll go riding uptown and down. There's so much to see. Every building and tree with people and cars everywhere. All the interesting places. New friends and new faces. Each time we pick up a fare. One time, a big lady who said she was Sadie was singing that night in a show. She broke into a song and I sang right along. You couldn't tell me from the pro. Ow! <laughs> to the hospital quick, my wife is quite sick, cried a man as we stopped for the light. Our baby is due, and like lightning we flew. We made it in time, what a night. Sometimes when it's slow, to the airport we go. We get in the line at the stand to wait for a fare and a hot dog we share while we watch the planes take off and land. <laughs> the door opened wide. Guess who jumped inside? Two clowns and a chimp they called Murray. Whoa. We're performing at eight, and our flight came in late to the circus, and please try to hurry. We get such big tips on most of our trips. Jim is surprised at this treat, but he doesn't know that I put on a show for the passengers in the back seat. Look at the, the little glasses and the oh, nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. At the end of each day, when we've earned our pay, we drive the cab back to its spot, where our boss named Lou says, Hi, how'd you do? Have a biscuit. He likes me a lot. It's just like a dream. Me and Jim, we're a team. I'm always there at his side. We never stand still. Every day's a new thrill. Come join us next time for a ride. <laughs> oh, boy, that's what I call a story with a happy ending. I like that book. I'm glad you liked it, Kino. Yep, the story was good, and the museum was good. But, but Lucy, can we go back now? Right now? Well, yeah, because Mara said that they would read more stories, and I bet they're about to get started. Now, I can just feel it in my bones. I also have a surprise for Mara. Oh, well, let's go then. But I have to run a few errands, but I'll drop you off. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Gee, I hope I'm not too late. This book is really good. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Oh, great, great. Yes. Hey. Do you know this one? Yeah, I think I've read this one. You before. do it? This one this one's about Harvey. Wait, wait. Don't start the story without me. Or aren't you gonna read the story about Harvey cleaning his room? Oh, Felton, did you always clean your room when you were a kid? Look, yes. that's another story. <laughs> I mean, let's stay with uh Clean Your Room, Harvey Moon by Pat Cummings. Illustrated and written by Pat Cummings, okay? You yes. ready for this? Yes. Okay. 
On Saturday morning at 10 to 9, Harvey Moon was eating toast, waiting for the cartoon show that he enjoyed the most. With minutes left to go, he heard the voice of doom. Today, young man, his mother said, is the day you clean your room. Oh, no, no, moaned Harvey, red in the face. I'll miss Rotten Ed and invaders from space. Right this second, she ordered and gave him the broom. Harvey marched angrily up to his room. <laughs> <laughs> that really didn't seem that messy at all. I mean, hey, look, at first he throw his dirty clothes out in the hall. Under the bed was an ice cream smeared shirt. Jeans that had what his mother called ground in dirt. <laughs> Two towels and swim trunks that uh, seemed to be wet. Uh, three socks he uh, sniffed and found out uh, they weren't dirty <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, under the dresser, there was a lump, warm and gray, that he didn't recognize. So, you know, he put it away. The floor of the closet had clumps hard and dirty of t shirts and sweatshirts. It was 10 30. Harvey panicked and thought, I should be through soon. I'll eat lunch while I watch Creature Zero at noon. Yay! He's grabbing marbles and crayons and flat bottle caps and two of his own special lightning bug traps and uh, the softball he couldn't find last Saturday. One toothbrush, one helmet. Well, he put them away. I'll clear these toys out and then I'll be done. Ken's Kung Fu Corner will be on at one. <laughs> And under his desk were some comics, you know, all icky ooh, from something inside that was dripping and sticky. Ooh. He found some library books, you know, he'd forgotten he had, and his skates from Aunt Sarah, and the bow tie from his dad. And he found the caboose that was missing its train, a whistle, paintbrushes, and a map of the brain. He found Sneakers, oh boy, <laughs> and card games, and up under the bed, goggles, flippers, and a grasshopper, dead, and a long lost cookie. Mm -hmm. But it was all fuzzy and gray. Plastic cards, boats, and planes. Well, he put them away. Just then, Harvey happened to notice the clock. Oh, it's almost two, Harvey shouted. And he went into shock. I missed cavemen capers on Channel 9, and I'm starving. I'm tired. This room looks fine, you know. So he put up his bathrobe and the bat and the football with a few other things. Then he ran down the hall shouting, Mom, 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 I'm finished. <laughs> Harvey put back the broom. His mother stepped cautiously into his room. I am really amazed, his mother said. Harvey B. Wow, he can watch TV now. He was through, uh, so it seemed. Fix you some lunch, she said. And when you are done, you and I will get started on lump number <laughs> What? <laughs> okay, she knew that Harvey had been putting that stuff under the rug. Now tell me, did he clean up his room? No. No. Well, no, he didn't? What did sure. he do? He just uh, moved the dirt around? Is that all he did? No. No, what did he do? He put things under the rug. Rug, that's what. Put things what? under the rug, that's right. Oh, boy, well, I've sure enjoyed reading with you. Thank you so much. Sure thing, sure. We have another story, don't we? Catherine, are you going to yeah. read? I'll tell you what, if Catherine's going to read, I'm going to stay because she reads really well. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll take these okay. from you. Come on. Story time, oh, Sherry. Yeah. Your story. Well, you're going to transport me with your story. I, guess, I would love to read. I'm excited to read in front of you, Felton. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can do as well, but I'll try. Oh, I, I'm, I know you'll make me feel like a little kid again. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I hope I make everybody feel like a little kid again. But I have to ask you a question first. Have you ever heard of the baby blue cat who said... No. 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 Oh, no. What? No. Well, once there was a mama cat, and she had four baby cats. Baby white cat, 
baby striped cat, baby orange cat, and baby blue cat. <laughs> Mama cat loved her baby cats with all her heart. And the baby cats spent most of their days rolling and playing and jumping and eating bugs. But every day at five o'clock, Mama cat would make her baby cats a very special supper. <laughs> One day, Mama Cat made her baby cats a fish sandwich and a saucer of milk. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Mama Cat asked her baby cats if they liked their supper. Meow, said Baby White Cat. Meow, said Baby Striped Cat. Meow, said Baby Orange Cat. But Baby Blue Cat said, no! <laughs> Mama Cat said, if you finish your sandwiches and drink all of your saucer of milk, you may each have a cupcake. Would you like that? Meow, said Baby White Cat. Meow, said Baby Striped Cat. Meow, said Baby Orange Cat. But Baby Blue Cat said, no. <laughs> Mama Cat asked her baby cats if they would like to climb into bed and hear a wonderful bedtime story. Meow, said Baby White Cat. Meow, <laughs> said Baby Striped Cat. Meow, said Baby Orange Cat. But Baby Blue Cat said, no! No! <laughs> no! no! Mama Cat tucked Baby Orange Cat, Baby White Cat, Baby Striped Cat into bed, and she read them a wonderful bedtime story, and they went fast asleep. Baby Blue Cat sat all alone at the kitchen table, except for his fish sandwich, his saucer of milk, and no cupcake. Mama Cat came in and asked Baby Blue Cat if he was sorry for the way he acted. And Baby Blue Cat said, No! Mama Cat sat in her favorite chair. Oh, my, she said. And she looked very, very sad. Baby Blue Cat quietly went into Mama Cat, and quietly he crept up onto her lap. Growl, he said. I'd like my supper. Growl, he said. And I'd like a cupcake. Growl, he said. And I'd like to hear a bedtime story. <laughs> his mama cat and then mama cat <coughs> sat with baby blue cat while he finished his fish sandwich drank his saucer of milk and ate his delicious cupcake mm. Mm. then mama cat tucked baby blue cat into bed with baby orange cat baby white cat baby striped cat and she told him a wonderful bedtime story and then she kissed him goodnight. Baby Blue Cat, she said, you must be very, very sleepy. And Baby Blue Cat said, No! <laughs> what did he say? No! <laughs> Sad. And now, when I ask you, have you ever heard of the baby blue cat who said no? You'll say, Yes! Oh, that was a good story, wasn't it? Have you ever oh, said yes. no? Yes. Oh, look. I have a letter. I have a letter. Do you want to help me open it? Let's see what it says. Oh, my goodness. It says, Dear Mr. Blueberry, 
I love Wales. Love Emily. And that was right there in my book. Ian, Ian, Ian have I... a seat. Oh, look. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I love Wales very much. And I think I saw one in my pond. Well, please send me some information on Wales, as I think he might be hurt. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, here are some details about whales. I don't think you'll find it was a whale you saw, because whales don't live in ponds, but in salt water. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. <gasps> Dear Mr. Blueberry, I am now putting salt into the pond every day before breakfast. And, and last night, I saw my whale smile. <laughs> I think he's feeling better. He might be lost. What do you think? <laughs> Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't put any more salt in the pond. I'm afraid there can't be a whale in your pond because whales don't get lost. The whales are too big for them. <laughs> <laughs> they always know where they are in the oceans, though. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. <gasps> Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I am very, very happy because I saw my whale jump up and sport lots of water. He looked blue. Does this mean he might be a blue whale? Love, Emily. P.S. What can I feed him with? Dear Emily, blue whales are blue, and they eat tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the sea. However, I must tell you that a blue whale is much too big to live in your pond. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. P.S. Perhaps it is a blue goldfish. Dear Mr. Blueberry, last night I read your letter to my whale, and afterward he let me stroke his head. It was very exciting. I secretly took him some crunched up cornflakes <laughs> and, and breadcrumbs, and this morning I looked in the pond and they were all gone. I think I shall call him Arthur. <laughs> what do you think? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, I must point out to you quite forcibly now that in no way could a whale live in your pond. You may not know that whales are migratory, which means they travel great distances each day. I am sorry to disappoint you. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I'm a little sad. Arthur has gone. I think your letter made sense to him, and he has decided to be migratory again. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't be too sad. It really was impossible for a whale to live in your pond. Perhaps when you are older, you would like to sail the ocean studying and protecting whales. Sincerely, 
Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, it's been the happiest day. I went to the beach, and you'll never guess, but I saw Arthur. I, I called to him, and, and he smiled. I knew it was Arthur because he let me stroke his head. I, I gave him some of my sandwich, and then we said goodbye. I shouted that I loved him very, very, very much. And I hope you don't mind, but I said that you loved him too. Love, Emily, and Arthur. Yes. yes. Thank you, Catherine. That was wonderful, Catherine. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank sure. you, Felton. I hope you come again. And Kino, thanks for inviting your wonderful friends. And thanks for bringing these great books. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Will you come by again? Oh, sure. Oh, but before we leave, I'd like to tell you about another dog book. Uh, except it, it, it isn't about Maxie the dog. May I? Oh, of course, of course. OK, well, when I was little, I, I thought that, that the the Clifford the Big Red Dog by Norman Bridwell was really a oh, cool book. yes, I love yeah, this book. It. Oh, and I want to tell you about a great book about cats, but it's not about a baby blue cat. No? <laughs> no. It's called Millions of Cats. Millions of Cats? Mm-hmm. Gee, I don't even see one around here. Oh, it's a book, and it was written by Wanda Gag, you know. Well, bye-bye for now, and bye-bye to all of you. Please come again sometime for another story time. And remember, keep a story in your heart. Wasn't that great? <laughs>